The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. It was before the festival of Passover, and Jesus knew that his hour had come for him to pass from this world to the Father. He had always loved those who were his own in the world. Now he showed how perfect his love was. They were at supper, and the devil had already put it into the mind of Judas Iscariot, son of Simon, to betray him. Jesus knew that the Father had put everything into his hands, and that he had come from God and was returning to God, and he got up from table, removed his outer garment, and, taking a towel, wrapped it round his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel he was wearing. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, At the moment you do not know what I am doing, but later you will understand. Never, said Peter, you shall never wash my feet. Jesus replied, If I do not wash you, you can have nothing in common with me. Then, Lord, said Simon Peter, not only my feet, but my hands and my head as well. Jesus said, no one who has taken a bath needs washing. He is clean all over. You too are clean, though not all of you are. He knew who was going to betray him. And that is why he said, though not all of you are. When he had washed their feet and put on his clothes again, he went back to the table. Do you understand, he said, what I have done to you? You call me Master and Lord, and rightly so, for I am. If I then, the Lord and Master, have washed your feet, you should wash each other's feet. I have given you an example so that you may copy what I have done to you. The Gospel of the Lord. The the idea of Passover is something that we are going to be very familiar with over the next three days as we celebrate the Triduum. And Passover is, is really a central event in the life of the people of Israel. And we hear in our, our first reading tonight how the Lord sent the angel of death into the land of Egypt, where the people of, of Israel were languishing as slaves. And that angel of death was going to destroy all those who kept Israel in slavery. And so is that the angel of death would pass over the people of Israel. They slayed a lamb and they painted their doorways with the blood of the lamb. And that allowed the angel of death to pass over the children of Israel. You know, Moses led those people out of slavery. And it took them 40 years of journeying that was hard, that was difficult. Sometimes they were really unfaithful to God. Sometimes they just wanted to go back into slavery. But somehow, with the grace of God, they persevered. And they became a free people. They became a united people. 
And Moses instructs the people of Israel that every year they are to have a Passover feast to remember what the Lord has done for them, taking them out of slavery so that they were saved to remind themselves they were saved by the blood of the Lamb. And here we are, thousands of years later, gathered here tonight, and we will sing of the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. We are remembering what the people of Israel were remembering, what the people of Israel knew. And it's an important reminder that in order to understand our Christian practices, we, we need to understand our Jewish heritage. To be a good Christian means to be a good Jew. Jesus was a Jew. The early church were Jews. And they brought to us their heritage. And tonight, we practice many of the things that they have brought to us. The whole structure of the way that we celebrate Mass is Jewish. Many of the prayers that we use throughout our Mass are Jewish prayers. That we build on the tradition as God gradually unfolds His salvation first through his choice of the people of Israel and then extending that choice into the church. And one of the things that would happen at a Jewish Passover is, is a kind of very important but a small ritual that is part of our liturgy tonight. It's a strange ritual and it involves the washing of feet. You know, when people would go to their family to celebrate the Passover or be with their loved ones to celebrate the Passover, the host would always arrange to meet them at the door. And the first thing that they would do, because remember, they didn't come in cars, they didn't have paved roads, they came with sandals, sometimes bare feet, and they would come to the door, they were hot, they were dirty, and so the host would arrange for their feet to be washed, to comfort them, to welcome them, to make them feel refreshed. But the host never, ever, ever washed the feet. That wasn't the host's place. It was the person of the lowest rank within the household that washed the feet. And that was usually the servant. And even among the servants, it was the servant of the lowest rank who washed the feet. Because think about it, washing feet is not something that we enjoy doing. Washing our own feet, perhaps, but washing each other's, well, that's above and beyond. And so it's the, the kind of weakest person, the most unimportant person who washes the guest's feet. And then the host would welcome them in, their guests, and they would anoint them with oil to make their, their guests realize just how precious and valuable they are. There was a whole ritual, but it was the place in the servant to wash the feet. And here we have Jesus in John's gospel at the Last Supper. He says nothing, but he gets up he strips himself of his outer garments, put a towel round his waist, and started washing the feet of the disciples. Can you imagine their confusion? Jesus is the host. What's he doing? This isn't the host's place. This is the servant's place. And Jesus starts washing their feet and then Peter, Peter being the one with the, the fuse, the short fuse, when it comes to Peter, he says, what do you think you're doing? You're not going to wash my feet. I know who you are. You're the Son of God who comes to liberate us, to free us. 
You're not a slave. You're a liberator. You're not washing my feet. You know, in some ways, Peter's got it right. You know, and, and Jesus says, Peter, I need to wash your feet. You don't understand just now, but you will understand in time. Because what I am doing is revealing something about how God operates. I need to wash your feet. Because I, your Lord and Master, you're right to call me your Lord and Master. And I come and I serve. I humble myself to let you know that that's how God works. God humbles himself. And Peter reacts to this. It's it's probably Peter's really struggling to try and and make sense of this. And he says, Lord, don't, 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 don't wash my feet. Wash all of me. And in some ways, that's resistance. But in another way, it's Peter saying, I give you all of me. I give you all of me. Wash me clean. Wash me in your ways. Wash away my resistance. You know, that's what we do at baptism. That's what happened when you and I came to the waters of the font and were baptized into Christ Jesus. We were surrendering ourselves. And that's why every year the church gives us that opportunity, particularly as adults now, to be able to recommit to surrendering ourselves. And we ask ourselves, well, why did God, why did Jesus humiliate himself by taking on the role of the servant? And he washes his feet we are reminded of those words in John's gospel. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This is what it's all about. This is what Jesus is all about. This is what God is all about. That he gives us his own beloved son because he loves us so much. You know, when Jesus kneels and washes the feet of the disciples, he doesn't do so as a slave. But rather, he comes as one who kneels before us and respects the feet of the person that he washes. He respects the person. It's an act of love, not an act of service, of slavery. He comes to honor. He comes to give value. He comes to comfort. And we're reminded of that today. That Jesus respects everyone. Because ultimately, God created us. We are gods. And and what this three days tell us and remind us is that God doesn't make junk. In in God's eyes, we are all valued, we are all respected, and we're all loved. And Jesus is saying to us that the first thing that we have to do is to recognize our dignity. You know, we we get caught up in all the labels that we put on ourselves and all the things that we think we are. But we have only one dignity. And that is that we are all sons and daughters of a God who loves us. And our own dignity is not something that we have because of our intelligence or because our our gifts, our talents, or because we've achieved something in this achieving world. Our dignity is given as gift to us by God. 
And just think about this. You were created for all eternity. To love, to learn how to love, and to reach out, and ultimately to touch God himself. Just think about that. You were created for all eternity. To love, to learn how to love, to care, to reach out, and to ultimately touch God himself. Our God is a humble God. He humbles himself before us who he has created. You know, Dom Helda Cameria, an archbishop in South America who died in 1999, he said, the problem with human beings is that God is more humble than we are. You know, we're not very humble. We want our own way. We want things to be as we want them to be. We want the things that we want to have. And, and when things don't work out, we get angry. And, and if, if we don't work out together, we join with one another and we get angrier still. And before you know it, we have war. That our small sin of selfishness mutates and grows and develops and becomes everything that is contrary to the will of God. You know, God's wonderful humility is that instead of destroying us for not keeping the rules and regulations, He Himself measures us as He measures Himself. And so He has given us a lovely Jesus who is a Savior. And the lovely Jesus weeps when we weep. He suffers when we suffer. And he dies as we all must die. And why does he do these things? Because he wants us to know that this is the way that God loves. God is a giver, not a taker. God is someone who enters into our life not to overwhelm us, but to love us with a new kind of love, a self-sacrificing love. Jesus will say to his people, if you really believe, if you really care, you will give up everything and follow me. And at the Last Supper, it's almost as he, he tries to give us a sign to remind us of that. That to be a follower of Jesus, to be like Jesus, requires the same of us. And so he takes bread and he offers it up and he says to us, you know, this bread will be like my body that will be offered up to you, for you. And he takes the cup and he says, this cup is my blood that will be poured out in love for you. Do this as a memorial of me. And now when we come together today, tomorrow, for the rest of time, when we come together, this is the way we will remember Christ one who gives his body and blood out of a deep and lasting love for you, and that saves your life. And this is what the washing of the feet means. This is what Eucharist means. This is what baptismal priesthood means. This is what ministerial priesthood means. It's the total emptying of anything except the willingness and the desire 
to reach out to others, to heal them, to care for them, to love them, to bring them out of the cold and into the warmth of God's love. We must learn to wash feet. And we must learn that the best part of us is when we are forgetting ourselves and reaching out in love to our brothers and sisters. Let me be your servant. Let me be as Christ to you. Let me be as Christ to you.